pioneering spirit is, is what we would call Americanism, I guess, uh, which is the, the idea that there's something out there that we don't know about, let's go find it. Let's go get it. You know, if there's something, if there's a way that we can make money, if there's a way that we can better our situation, just because there's god awful danger over that hill doesn't mean we shouldn't go try it. Fort Herod actually was the brainchild of James Herod. These guys reminds me of myself and my friends. They they were warned coming down. They started from Fort Pitt, came down the Ohio River. They were warned by whites and Indians alike. Oh. You know, the Indians have, have struck the war post. The Indians are on the war path. These people were killed here. You know, this settlement was attacked there. Oh, that'll be okay. You know, that's okay. They won't bother us. Came here, came to what we call the Big Spring, which is the source of the town branch. Uh, a war party of Indians came out of that creek, attacked them, killed a fellow, wounded another fellow very badly. They all went back east across the mountains. They joined up with William Christian's company of Virginia militia. They wound up fighting in the final and decisive battle of Lord Dunmore's war, which took place at Point Pleasant, which is in West Virginia on the Ohio River. It was actually sort of a toss up, but the Indians gave way. Well, we signed peace treaties and the Indians for a while were, were peaceful. Herod came back and thought, you know what? Maybe a fort might not be a bad idea. So they came about 300 yards down the town branch to a, a large hill, uh, which stood about 75 yards to our, our northeast, and they built their fort there. The original fort uh, it had three block houses, the spring inside, the blacksmith shop, the animal corral. Uh, all of these things were actually in Fort Herod, almost in the same spot that they are today. We try to keep this authentic looking. Uh, we try to not uh, have things out of place that wouldn't have been. Of course, we can't completely uh, make it like the original one because as you see, we need light, we need <laughs> electricity and different things like that that they didn't have, but we do the best we can as far as that goes. And we try to do things that they had or did back in the time period. But uh, we're trying to uh, preserve history just as long as we can. First thing you'll encounter is the James Herod Blockhouse, which houses our gunsmith today, who works on guns and repairs guns and makes new ones. Uh, as you go on down the, the uh, sidewalk, you will encounter uh, the spring. Fort Herod was the only fort on the frontier that we're aware of. It had its own water supply inside the fort, and it was in the northwest corner just like it is in the reproduced fort here. Uh, and it supplied them with water for all sorts of uses, mostly for putting out fires, because the first thing a Shawnee party would do is try to burn the fort down. And the records tell us Fort Herod's caught on fire many times, but it was never damaged because they had their own water supply inside the fort they could use to put out fires with. In the blacksmith shop, which is one of the kids' favorites, they love the blacksmith shop. Cabin after that is our uh, broom maker's cabin. Uh, you also have, inside that cabin is all the farming tools that they would have been used in those days hanging on the walls. So you have plows and you have uh, rakes and shovels and all the stuff and axes and stuff that the uh, that the farmers would have been using, plus our interpreter in there doing um, broom making. Then the next cabin is a simple cabin, like you know your average Joe would have had out here. Uh, very sparsely, almost no decorations at all. A stick frame bed and uh, what they would have had, you know, in the early 1700s out here. And then we have the schoolhouse you come to. Uh, which Fort Herod has the first school in the state of Kentucky or in the county of Kentucky at the time out here on the frontier. Uh, Jane Coons taught school there for several years um, and it's set up almost exactly like it was. Uh, you'll notice something different about that cabin. It has no chinking in the walls because uh, Jane Coons thought that the fresh air would allow the children to think more clearly, but they only went to school in the dead of winter. So if you can imagine being in there in January, uh, with no chinking on the walls, how cold it was in there. And they had no paper, so they wrote on horn books. We have a monument to George Rogers Clark and the pioneering spirit in general. Uh, George Rogers Clark represents the center figure. There's five of them on, on the monument. Uh, the two people on the left are a family, a husband and wife holding the baby, and the two people on the right are what were called experienced long hunters and settlers of the day. So Atlanta has a whole spectrum of the people that were out here. People are like, why do you have such a fine monument in little old Harrodsburg? Because George Rogers Clark was here and, and Harrodsburg was here and it was a big deal. 
Uh, we want to is keep this going just as long as we can because it does represent Kentucky. Lots to see and do here at Fort Herod.